let us talk about Bertrand model of duopoly. And let us take here a simple linear market demand function and earlier whenever I said market demand function, I wrote inverse demand function, but for this particular problem, we are going to write the demand function. So, what is the demand function? It is q is equal to 6 minus p, when p is between 0 and 6, otherwise the quantity demanded is equal to 0. We have two forms, form 1 and form 2, both the forms they decide their price. So, form 1 decides p 1 and form 2 decides p 2. p 1 has to be, we have already done for the continuous cases uh, in Cournot model of duopoly and Stackelberg, Stackelberg model of duopoly. In this particular case, we will limit ourselves to only integer prices, so that we get a table rather than uh, rather than we have to use uh, differentiation like we did earlier. So, we have here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and 6, this is what we would do. And here also p 2 has to be one of these numbers. Now, the thing is if p i is less than p j, of course, i is either 1 or 2 or j is 1 or 2. So, let us say here p 1 and here we have p 2. So, if p 1 is less than p 2, everyone in the economy is going to buy it from form 1. Okay. Also, we have to understand what happens when p 1 is equal to p 2, when both the firms have the same price. What we assume here in this particular case that they would divide the market evenly. So, I have already done the table here the table would give us the total revenue for the firm. We will also make another simplifying assumption that the cost is equal to 0. So, what the firms are interested in is maximizing revenue. So, what we have here is firm 1 and on this side we have firm 2. Firm 1 can have either price 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Similarly, firm 2 can have price either as 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. So, if both of them have price is equal to 0, what would be the market demand? The market demand is going to be equal to 6 minus 0, means 6 unit would be sold in the market. Okay. So, 6 minus 0, let me write here, 6 minus 0 is 6 and they would evenly split the market, what it means that firm 1 will be able to sell 3 units and firm 2 will be able to sell 3 units. What would be the total revenue for the firm 1? And remember, because we have assumed that there is no cost involved, so firms are interested in maximizing their total revenue. Anyway, profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost, total cost happens to be equal to 0, so profit is equal to total revenue. So, firms again let me repeat firms are interested in maximizing their total revenue. So, they both sell 3 units, but the what would be the market price? Market price is 0, it means their total revenue is going to be equal to 0. Both the firms and the first number indicates the total revenue for the firm 1 and the second number indicates the total revenue for the firm 2, both the firms make 0. Now, let us move to this particular box, it looks that we have 49 boxes, but do not worry, it is not that difficult to fill in. So, we will do for few boxes and then you would see that how quickly we can fill it up. So, what is happening here in this box, firm 1 has price 0 and firm 2 has price 1, it means firm 1 has the lower price. So, everyone will go to the firm 1. What would be the market price? Because form 1 has the lower price, the market price is again going to be equal to 0. So, no matter what, how many units form sells, its total revenue is going to be equal to 0. And form 2 is not able to sell any unit, so again the total revenue of form 2 is going to be equal to 0. So, all 
these boxes we will have 0 comma 0 as the total revenue. And same is the case here in the this particular column, because in this in these boxes what is going to happen that firm 2 would have the lower price which is equal to 0. So, market price is again going to be equal to 0 and thus no one will make any profit. So, this is the way we get it. Now, how about in this box? Because now the price that they have both have 1. So, market price is going to be equal to 1 and they will sell 6 minus 1 5 units. Out of 5 units half would go to form 1 and half would go to form 2. So, each of them would sell 2.5 units. When the price is 1 and they sell 2.5 units, how much is going to be the total revenue? 2.5 multiplied by 1, they both will have 2.5 and 2.5. Now, what is going to happen in these boxes? In these boxes, firm 1 would have higher price than firm 2. So, firm 2 would capture the whole market and firm 2 is selling its product at 1. So, how many units again firm 2 would be able to sell? Coming back to formula, that quantity sold is 6 minus p. So, p happens to be 1. So, firm 2 will sell 5 units and 5 units at the price of 1. It means total revenue is going to be 5 for firm 2 and of course, firm 1 would not be able to sell anything. So, it is going to be 0 comma 5, 0 comma 5, 0 comma 5, 0 comma 5 and here it is symmetric. So, firm 1 is going to earn 5 and firm 2 is going to earn 0. Now, we come to this box. Now, the price is 2, so the 4 units would be sold, total revenue is going to be 4 multiplied by 2 which is 8, they would both split it evenly, so they both are going to make 4 comma 4. And in these boxes, firm 2 would capture the whole market and get the total profit. So, 0 comma 8, 0 comma 8, 0 comma 8, 0 comma 8 and here 8 comma 0, 8 comma 0, 8 comma 0, 8 comma 0. What is going to happen in this box? They both propose price as 3, so market price is going to be 3. How many units they would sell? 3 units in total. So, total revenue is going to be 3 multiplied by 3, 9 and they both would split it evenly. So, 4.5 comma 4.5 and here the whole market is captured by firm 2 and here all the market is captured by firm 1. So, this is the way we keep on filling. What is going to happen in this box? They would sell 2 units. Why? Because they both have the price of 4. So, minimum of 4 is 4, market price is 4. So, they sell 2 unit, 1 by firm 1 and 1 by firm 2. So, again they make 4 multiplied by 1 that would be the total revenue for one firm. So, 4 comma 4. What is happening in these two boxes? Firm 1 is proposing 5, firm 2 is proposing 4, it means the market price is going to be equal to 4, firm 2 would be able to sell 2 units according to the formula. So, the revenue the firm 2 will have 8 and firm 1 will have 0. So, 0 comma 8, 8 comma 0, 8 comma 0. Now, what happens in this box? This box again they have their minimum price is equal to 5, they would be able to sell 1 unit, they would split it half and half, they both would sell half unit. Now, what it means that half multiplied by 5 would be revenue for one from 2.5 comma 2.5 and here it is going to be 0 comma 5 and 5 comma 0 and using the similar logic here we are going to get 0 comma 0. Now, we have already learned how to obtain the Nash equilibrium. We see that if firm 1 believes that firm 2 is producing 
zero going charging price zero then what should it do no matter what it should do what it does it would always have zero profit so all are the best responses and let me use a different color to indicate that all are the best responses if firm 1 thinks that firm 2 is going to price its product at 1 what is the best response it should also price its product at 1 because if it prices its product at 0 the total revenue is going to be equal to 0 if it prices its product and higher than 1 then again profit is going to be equal to 0 so the best response is 1 and this process we continue here the best response is again 1 here the best response is 2 here the best response is 3 what i mean here that when firm thinks firm 1 thinks that firm 2 is going to price its product at 4 the best response is 3 because 3 gives the 9 unit of total revenue all other pricing strategy they give lower total revenue so the best is 3 and here again we see the best is 3 and here again the best is 3 and similarly we can do for the firm 2 what we get here that if firm 2 thinks that firm 1 is going to produce at 0 all pricing strategies are the best responses why because no matter what firm 2 selects the total revenue is going to be equal to 0 and here the best strategy is 1 if firm 2 thinks that firm 1 is going to price its product at 2 then the best response is 2 and if firm 2 thinks that firm 1 is going to price its product at 3 the best response is 3 and if firm 2 thinks that firm 1 is going to price its product at 4 the best response is again 3 let us see this is the 3 and it keeps on at 3. So, what we see here basically in this box they are playing the best responses of each other only if the economy is in this box then only there is an equilibrium otherwise one of the firm would have an incentive to deviate. So, they both would produce their 2.5 units and they both would propose to sell it at 1 this is what the Bertrand market of duopoly is what happens in the Bertrand market of duopoly that we see that if we had done for the continuous case what we would have found that the price becomes lower and lower and it reaches to the marginal cost think about the continuous case okay just for a moment let us look at the continuous case here what we have the quantity is given by this particular formula okay how we decide the p if we take the lower of the two values if firm 1 proposes p i p 1 and firm 2 proposes p 2 we have to see which one is the lower and this lower will be taken here because the firm which has the lower price would capture the whole market and if p 1 is equal to p 2 then we will use the same and we would say both the firms would capture half of the market okay now what happens if a firm proposes price p what the other firm should do other firm should charge slightly lower price and by charging slightly lower price it would capture the whole market rather than sharing the profit or sharing the total revenue with the other firm it would be able to capture the market so both the firms would have this incentive to decrease their price so they would keep on decreasing their price till they hit the marginal cost barrier they couldn't go below the marginal cost because if they do so they would making loss that the concept we learned uh, that firm should be able to recover its marginal cost at least then only it would produce that particular unit so they can't go below the marginal cost so both the firms would propose the price equal to marginal cost what would be interesting to see is what happens when the firms have different marginal cost also what happens 
when the firms have different level of capacity, what if they cannot cater to the whole market. These are the larger questions, for that you will have to get more into game theory. And this is it for the, but uh, this is it for the Bertrand model of duopoly. Thank you.